After reading the entire original 1830s edition of the Book of Mormon, I conducted an analysis that revealed shocking findings. In this video, I'll show you how edits to the Book of Mormon provide evidence of its authenticity. Now, I wanted to read the original Book of Mormon from the 1830s because it's something I've always wanted to do. Some people are surprised to learn that the Book of Mormon has been edited, with some critics arguing that these changes were made to better align with evolving views. If a believer finds out that the Book of Mormon has been changed or edited from its original published version, that's a very good way to kind of spook somebody, to kind of freak them out, say, now you know it's been changed, right? Sometimes you'll hear numbers thrown out like there's been a thousand changes or 3,000 changes or whatever, to which I want to say, well, what are those changes? Are they periods and commas being moved or are they substantive changes to the meanings of the text? And my first observation from reading the 1830s version of the Book of Mormon is that these criticisms are frankly nonsense. I was amazed to see just how little has changed. Besides some obvious grammatical errors, if I hadn't been looking for edits, I'm not sure I would have noticed any. So there are accidental errors. The vast majority of them don't change the meaning, but there are some that do occasionally. It really reinforced the miraculous nature of the book to me. This book came out of nowhere nearly 200 years ago and is virtually the same and just as impactful as it was when it first came out. Did you know the original Book of Mormon has major grammar errors? Let me talk more about the edits. While reading the original 1830s edition of the Book of Mormon, I thought I would compare with the modern version. In doing so, I started to notice what I thought was a pattern in the changes and edits to the book. I wondered if perhaps the edits left behind a fingerprint of Book of Mormon authorship. At each of these stages, from Joseph Smith reading it off all the way to setting the type, there's potential for error. So what do these edits actually look like? The majority of the edits to the Book of Mormon are relatively minor and primarily consist of simple word changes. For example, a common edit in the Book of Mormon is updating the word what to who for more proper grammar. This can be seen very clearly in Moroni chapter 10 verse 26. These changes help clarify the text without altering its original meaning. To be honest, these changes are pretty bland. Notably, the edits are largely a result of identifying and correcting errors rather than making decisions that might indicate an editorial voice or deliberate shift in tone. However, the thought of a pattern of edits still intrigued me, so I decided to put my hypothesis to the test. Do the edits in the Book of Mormon display a pattern? Research into the Book of Mormon, especially through stylometric analysis, reveals linguistic patterns that suggest the text may have multiple authors or voices. A few years ago, some researchers did this rad thing called word print analysis against all of the supposed writers in the book and found significant statistical differences in the style between each of the writers. However, pinpointing exact authorship at any given point is actually quite challenging. This is due to the text's use of scriptural quotations, alternative authorship, and numerous sections abridged by Mormon or Moroni. For example, the Book of Alma combines writings from Alma, teachings from the Brass Plates, Mormon's abridgment, and translations by Joseph Smith, or the Second Book of Nephi which has writings from Lehi, Nephi, and Jacob in addition to quotations and likely other source material from the brass plates, all preceding the translation by Joseph Smith. The brass plates are the most influential text to the Nephite writers. So they all say, uh, sometimes they don't properly cite their sources. You can carefully kind of detect that they're quoting from this other ancient text called the brass plates that they claim to have had. The whole story begins with absconding with the brass plates and committing murder to, to get it. So it's an important book. And that is the most influential text to the Nephite writers as they're forming their thoughts. Like Paul and like John and like many of the New Testament writers in the Bible and Old Testament writers in the Bible, they will quote from these other sources like the brass plates and not say they're doing it. 
They won't admit it. They'll just quote it. Jesus did this all the time. He would say, the scriptures say this. And other times he wouldn't even say the scriptures say this. He would just begin quoting. And people understood what he was saying. Nephite authors are drawing from these other places, adding their own layer of voice on top of it. And we don't know how much is just verbatim and how much isn't. But there's a lot of brass in in the uh, Book of Mormon. Mormon was picking up those texts that were hundreds of years old when he was even editing them. And not even the whole book was edited by Mormon. So there's a lot of hands a lot of fingerprints all over the Book of Mormon. They get smoothed out a lot because Mormon took a broad brush and tried to edit them and smooth them. Whose style pervades? Whose voice comes across in that? Heaven only knows. Given the evidence of multiple authors, skeptics are left to face the challenge of deciding whether Joseph worked with others or if he wrote the Book of Mormon alone, intentionally crafting different voices. When considering the text's narrative coherence and the short time frame in which the book was produced, the theory of multiple authors becomes less plausible. Consequently, many skeptics regard Joseph Smith as a literary genius and a fraud, arguing that he created the voices to make the book appear more authentic. So perhaps he simply planned the entire 531 page book out entirely in his head and then was somehow skilled enough to dictate it in one seamless draft. Perhaps he was skilled at writing in different styles. However, even if that were the case, his mistakes would likely remain consistent from the start to the end of the book. After all, their mistakes and would be unintentional. Writing in different styles is one thing, but becoming an entirely different writer by altering one's mistakes is another. This is where my analysis comes into play. If the edits to the Book of Mormon exhibit a discernible pattern, it becomes less likely that the book was written by a single author. Think of it this way. Imagine a student submits a 500 page essay and a meticulous teacher uses a red pen to review and edit the entire document. If the essay were written entirely by the same student, we would expect a consistent number of red marks per X words throughout. However, if some sections are heavily marked with edits, while others are nearly untouched, this would suggest evidence of multiple authors. The same holds true for the Book of Mormon. If I was reading a book and it had a bunch of errors in chapter two and not so many in chapter three, either that author had a fever that day or or something, or he it was really late at night, or I'd, I'd know that there must have been some other hand in this because your voice really is your voice. It's really hard to not sound like you, especially when you're writing a text that's very long, say, 270,000 words like the Book of Mormon. Under the assumptions and limitations that the book is uniformly complex and that the author was equally alert throughout the entire process, we would expect a single author to commit consistent mistakes throughout the book. So let's see if we can find any patterns in the edits. To test my hypothesis, I gathered data by comparing the entire 1830s edition of the Book of Mormon with the modern version, then wrote a program to automatically detect and compare the edits between the two. The code takes in the books as giant text files and runs algorithms to compare version differences verse by verse. I used a difference library, a scratch-made minimum edit distance algorithm, and a ton of regular expressions to process the text, the result was a large data set primed for statistical analysis. First, I made a visualization of the edits. Here we have a smooth plot of the edits from start to finish. The vertical black lines show you the different subbooks of the Book of Mormon. Each colored line represents a different category of edit. From the plot, it does indeed look like there are some patterns here. There's almost the cyclical pattern going up and down from the start to the end of the book. To examine this further, I fit a curve to the total edits adjusted for word count from the start of the Book of Mormon to the end. This plot clearly shows a pattern of edit frequency that changes throughout sections of the book. The red line is the model and the gray section is the confidence interval. If a single author had written the book, we'd expect this to look more or less flat, meaning uniform in errors from start to finish. To test this hypothesis statistically, I conducted a Komagorov-Smirnov, that's a KS, test for uniform distributions. 
This test helps determine whether the edits follow a uniform distribution. This is similar to examining the red marks in the document and statistically analyzing the frequency of red marks per word. For example, we could count the red marks for every 1,000 words in the essay and run the test to determine if the distribution is uniform or balanced. I performed this test on varying batches of words to enhance its robustness. As you can see, all tests yielded significant results, indicating that the edits do indeed follow a discernible pattern. Additionally, an unsupervised machine learning clustering algorithm indicates there are 10 or so distinct editing patterns within the book, and when we aggregate these edits by word count, we can see various natural clusters when flattened into 2D space. Further evidence that these patterns don't seem to be quite uniform from within the book. The evidence for patterns seems pretty strong, but how well does it line up with the subbooks within the Book of Mormon? Distinct patterns emerge when comparing the books, with some appearing more similar than others. The vertical axis on this plot represents the number of words per edit. Therefore, higher bars indicate fewer edits were made in that subbook. While there appears to be some level of pattern, we can take a deeper look by applying statistical analysis. For a statistical test, we can perform analysis of variance to test if there are significant statistical differences among the subbooks. The analysis revealed significant differences in grammar and spelling between books and no significant differences in additions or subtractions. A Tuchel post hoc test provided additional insights, identifying which subbooks differed specifically. For instance, the Book of Alma was significantly different from 2nd Nephi and Jacob in terms of grammar edits. So what do these results even mean? This research challenges the idea that Joseph Smith deliberately introduced multiple voices into the text. If he had, we would expect his mistakes to be more uniform, but this is not what we see from the data and statistics. Yes, the Book of Mormon feels ancient. Uh, most people don't read ancient documents for fun, because why would you do that? But if you do, and I try to, you get a feel for what, what is ancient and what isn't and what ancient documents feel like. The Book of Mormon feels ancient. Uh, it concerns itself with, with certain things and not with other petty things. It can be very, very choppy at times, especially when it's moving through time very quickly. It will double back on itself. It'll introduce a story, but not the characters, and then go back and introduce the character. That smells like plates, right? Someone's carving this in, a story that everybody knows, and then they'll find out the name later and go back and reinsert it. In light of the new evidence, this creates a dilemma for skeptics. One, if Joseph Smith wrote the Book of Mormon alone, how could such complex errors and edits emerge unintentionally? The patterns seem too intricate to be accidental. While it is somewhat plausible for a single author to write in different voices, it is less likely that one person could create such distinct patterns of errors and edits. Two, if collaboration or multiple authors were involved in inventing the book, how can skeptics explain the book's narrative coherence, consistent vision, and rapid production? Moreover, the editing patterns are complex and do not align perfectly with the natural divisions between books, suggesting that any collaborators would have had to work across sections complicating the narrative cohesion. There are hundreds of internally consistent geographical references, multiple consistent timelines from three different migrations of people, multiple internally consistent calendar systems, realistic Hebraisms. Different narrators have measurably unique writing styles. While the new evidence doesn't definitively prove anything, it deepens our understanding of the Book of Mormon's complexity and introduces new challenges to those questioning its origin. The reason people discount the Book of Mormon as being ancient is because they believe the Bible is the only ancient document. They believe the Bible is the sole ancient voice and anything that compare, that does not properly fit with the Hebrew Old Testament, the Torah, the Tanakh, anything that doesn't fit with that cannot be ancient. That is a very myopic view a very uninformed view of the ancient world. There are many documents from the ancient world. And when you consult the whole corpus of ancient documents, the Book of Mormon fits in like peas and carrots. Now this work is not without its limitations, but I'll openly admit that. Unlike John DeLynn, who wants to pretend his research is the best thing ever, when in reality it's just bad science. 
But to find out about that, you're going to have to check out the next video.